enjoying the show, show your support for the live stream and the people making the show. Buy a super chat or super sticker on YouTube directly. Select your donation and type your message to the world and share. All donations go into directly funding new shows. Buy a super sticker or super chat now. Thank you. Real quick sprints, take the disc briskly, sunshine glints off my frisbee, crisply knows how it goes with the sand tween our toes, we got both of the pivots and all of the throws, got to hold the disc and move it at the right time, when you flick your wrist and you're feeling sublime, compose your throws, not discuss fluttery tricks from the brick and your biscuits buttery, feel the spirit, stretch every sinew stream. Enjoying the show, show your support for the live stream and the people... Welcome back to EBUCC, the European Beach Ultimate Club Championships mixed semi-final action. And we have Guayota in those tealy turquoise dashing shirts versus B-Fire of Torino. As Benji Rees grabs himself a little bit more voice for this mixed semi-final. B-Fire in the black jerseys starting on offense here, pinned towards this sideline. We've seen both these teams on the stream so far looking very tasty indeed. No surprise to see them here at the semi-final stage, although there is a drop in the centre field. So, opportunity for Guayota here to break on the game's very first point. Dishing off right on the end zone line here are the Spaniards. Monterde centering to Diaz. Diaz just continuing around the backfield. They're going to strike towards that far sideline. And it is a break for Guayota on the very first point of the game. Gabaldoni with the score. Well, I'll tell you what, how to execute some ruthless defensive line attack when you get your opportunity to punch that first one in. Well, we'd love to see it. Wyota had a game against, on this live stream, peer pressure, if my memory serves. And they rather made mincemeat of their opposition in that one. And they are here to go to work and do business. Tenerife, of course, a wonderful island location. Plenty of beachfront access for these players. So this is their surface that they excel on. Well, they do appear at many other championships as well and of course Torino of Italy or Turin as us Brits call it and that's going to be a shot into the deep space and Valentini as he did so often in the earlier game we streamed for B-Fire coming up trumps the shot right to the back of the end zone there hits Valentino for the score or Valentini I should say excuse me Valentini well, nothing teeny about that. That was a big, big shot to a big, big man and the favoured target of the Turin side. So, yes, Turin not too close to the coast or Torino. I quite like calling it Torino. Much nicer to say than Turin, I'd say. It's, I think it is quite interesting. It's obviously interesting when you see these countries as well. Obviously, you think about Italian still very dominant on grass, but the Spaniards are a beach frisbee first nation and they are representing strength in depth here not just in the mixed division but all across the championships well a good response to that opening point that first break going in the favor of the spanish side Here's the pull. First time we'll see the Guayota O-line come out. And they're going to begin at the brick mark. That pull landing out of bounds. And signal correctly, which we love to see. And of course, the, uh, the tape here out on the pitches is marked with the word brick, where the brick mark should be, which is a lovely little feature. So brought in by Dorta. Getting it towards the break side and then pinging downfield to Ramos. 
Little one two in the backfield. Here's Treviso. Treviso with a high release. Now continued, this is nice flow, solid from Guayota. And then a little bit of a cheeky high release, getting the position and tracking that towards the far sideline. Patricia Gonzalez for the score. 2-1 to Guayota. Oh, that is some lovely work, just reading the disc so well. Patricia Gonzalez just tracks that one down. It's almost like she spooks her defender, who can just do nothing but see it sail over the top of the head. Yeah, I feel like they hadn't really gone anything too expansive really on that first possession and then that high release flick just sitting it over the top and bodying out and securing Patricia Gonzalez Navasa. Those two sisters also on the team and uh, represented Yaka out at the World Ultimate Club Championships in Cincinnati early this year, but back representing Tenerife here. Guayota with the pool. Guayota were also out at Worlds, but uh, in the open division. First pass downfield. Valentini gets that high release break, looking to Brunelli, gesturing, little inside seam that they exploit. Brunelli into the backfield, Posse with those red tights. It's gonna collect that leading dump. Fantinato looks to come underneath, but He's going to be denied by the rapid Carretero. Very few as fast on the sand. And then Guayota punching on the first pass. Gabaldoni down the sideline. Finds an option he likes. And Guayota with a, another break now going further in front. Well, fantastic scenes for the Tenerife side. This is exactly how they wanted to start this semi-final. In charge, looking very, very dynamic across this surface indeed. But they do have that advantage with all that practice. Those of you who have not been to the, uh, to the Canary Islands, they are generally quite arid. And that kind of makes it not ideal for playing on the grass, but a lot of wonderful, beautiful beaches to play on. And you can tell that Guayota, so at home on the sand. Indeed, they are looking very good indeed in the early stages of this matchup. But uh, there is a fantastic scene in Turin, or Torino. In fact, commentary legend Ali Thomas spent some time there, I believe. As that pool, wow, does not go out the back. Just slows to a crawl at the back of the end zone. Posse picks up. And here's the rip to try and get field position and maybe a miscommunication between Stefanelli and Brunelli, but I don't think either of them really were ever going to get there. Well, having just watched an Italian-Spanish matchup on this very pitch in front of us in the women's division, this seems like a very familiar story. You've got the Spanish firing on all cylinders and the Italians just giving them gift basket after gift basket sort of really just taking the game away from themselves rather than being bested by their opponents necessarily. So quickly redirecting flow of traffic in the backfield. Nice switch passed off there by the Italians, but Brunelli unable to stop the disc going underneath De Monterde. Powering up line and there's going to be, I think, a bit of a foul call from contact on that up line cut there from uh, the 19 shirt Nicola Brunelli. Bit of an extended conversation. I believe Beach Ultimate adheres to the same discussion time limits that uh, regular grass play does and certainly indoors. And foul retracted. So still with Guayota here. Traviso comes underneath, wants to really fire that one in. A lot of revolution and velocity behind it and it pins the target. Sergio Diaz at the front of the end zone. Chacho makes it 4-1. Yeah, a lot of vim 
on that throw is how I describe it. It's almost like he was mad at him. Like, here, fine, here's a frisbee, now. But what a way to score. Is that a lefty lobe flick? Must be. Does it like B-Fire are on the back foot a little bit here? Well, that's... Slightly reeling and you can get understand why. The question is, can they find the mental resilience to stay calm with each other? Because when we saw Tequila Boom Boom pushed up against the ropes by Casayetes, it was very much a case of them starting to... You could see the body language against each other. But some hugs on the sideline for our camera. Marvellous media Luna from the Torino side. But neither big pull. Seen so many out here at these beach championships. Of course, slightly shorter fields than outdoor grass. I say it, not a field at all. Oh, sneaky around to try and get the block. Stefanelli floats that one over the top back to Brunelli. Feels like the offense is a bit of a struggle, so Brunelli wants to bang his way out of it. Suana, Susana Fuentes is so quick along the sand, but even she could not catch up with that one. Yeah, hailing from Medellin, Colombia. Of course, you know, a, a place not really known for its ultimate at all, Benji. Yeah, not the only uh, not the only Colombian on the team. Her teammate, Ana Diaz, as well. But uh, has represented Italy on the national stage before as a nation rather than on this club side. But it's fantastic to see Italians playing mixed and playing mixed well. Yeah, generally they favour open and women's. The Italians, but B Fire in the semi finals here after a silver medal at the European Masters and a top eight finish at Worlds. And they knocked out Chris Padover in the, uh, in the quarter final, but that one put deep and wisely aware of the threat was Fantinata who got her hands up to knock it out of the sideline. So B Fire with the disc back in their possession. And a much needed break. Oh, no, just a hold this would be. Breaking into the centre of the pitch. Dump off all, oh, that's too far out in front for even Valentini. You can see these miscues that seem so uncharacteristic for a team of B Fire's quality. Well, they really are. They don't seem it. They straight up are. The Italians just not firing on any cylinders. There's, is there no gas left in their tank? Nice little break around. I think I heard a little bit of a tip on that from the mark, but not enough to really deviate the flight of the disc. Bid comes flying in, doesn't get there. Carotero throws that one into Brunelli off the miscommunication. Brunelli wants to bang it again. Valentini is the target once more, and Valentini turns on the Jets. Pagano tries to G up his teammates on the sideline. Be fire back on the board at 4 2. Valentini's still just taking a little bit of time to measure himself as he gets up. Well, they asked a lot of Luca Valentini, but he delivered the goods. The young man's been playing for 12 years, originally from Fano, the computer engineer, all over the board for the stats for sure. And he's uh, represented the Italians at the national level as well. A silver medalist in the World Under 24 Championships back in Perth. And got the bronze in Heidelberg. So his fans at home are his family and his girlfriend and all of his friends. So if you happen to be a friend of Luca Valentini, welcome. We hope you're enjoying the coverage as much as we are enjoying providing it to you. Yeah, another glorious afternoon here in Portimao, as if there seems to ever be anything else. So Guayota's offense coming back out with that three-point run stopped. Lots of poaching from the female matching defenders in the deep space, but a big one off to the races. That is a monster of a flick and going deep. Our defender boxed out. Nothing Valley Vielo could do. Read brilliantly a scorcher of a sidearm from Patricio Gonzalez. Tracked down expertly, gives Guayo to their three point lead once more at five to two. You can tell that he's been throwing those to Gabaloni with a regularity. That cannot be bested. Good catch up from the defender, but despite the layout attempt, we'll get another look at that gorgeous pass. 
and a bit of a honey pass, we've been informed. So indeed, that one must have been thrown several times previously. Probably, I'm sure probably used to that one at this point. They get lots of reps. Got a nice early read on it. This pool, I think, is going to draw out of that far sideline. No, it takes the edge and comes back in. Gently yeah, uh, the catch. shepherded by the breeze. Wants the inside backhand, but it's not there. Posse, still count rising, tries to squeeze it into Brunelli. It's not there. Diaz with the quick flip into the end zone for the goal. Another Guayo to break. Uh, Yaza Ramos with the score. 6-2. Now this is just becoming a little bit demoralizing for Italian Ultimate fans. Having watched Tequila Boom Boom being taken a little bit apart by Casayetes, it is now again a story of the Italians just not finding their form whatsoever. A well-called timeout. Yeah, they need to do something to right the ship here on the coast of the Atlantic Ocean here in Portimao. We're going to take a little bit of a breather in the booth as the teams do the same, and we'll be back with you on the other side. We are Hive Ultimate, a group of players and coaches from all over the world working together to progress the next generation of Ultimate strategy. We've helped top teams win world championships and new teams introduce the sport in a fun and inclusive way. Search for Hive Ultimate on YouTube to learn more about our cutting edge strategies and to see analysis of world-class teams. To find out what Hive can do for your team, head over to our Patreon page where you can gain access to our exclusive drills and session plans and to join our worldwide community of coaches. Get ahead of the curve with Hive Ultimate. Don't want to miss anything? There are loads of tournaments happening, which you can attend either as a player or a spectator. You can find them on UltiCal, link in the description. Welcome back to Praia de Rocha, Portimao. The action in the Algarve continuing in the mixed division semi-final between B-Fire of Torino, Italy up against Guayota from Tenerife, Canary Islands, Spain. And the Spaniards are all over the Italians as it seemed to be in that previous women's semi-final as well, Hannah. Absolutely. It does really feel more like Ultimate Torino is just laying down in the sand and just handing the disc to Guayota, who, once they have it, are absolutely ruthless. They really aren't giving much of a look in at all. I mean, they've turned it over once all game. So, this Guayota side has been on hot form. But you could see the way they were building through the championship. They've really had their eyes on the prize. This is their surface, of course, coming from that beautiful island nation in the Canarias. Here's Pagano crossing over to offense, and Pagano sends a scorcher deep. That Caratero picks the pocket of Fuentes to bring down. I thought that was good for the score, and it's very rare that you see Fuentes not get that deep look to work, but Caratero with the speed. And now she wants to go coast to coast. So close for Caratero. Oh my goodness, Andrea Caratero. If that had come off, play of the tournament so far. If that, if that had come off, I might have just jumped off the booth, to be honest. Oh, please don't. Please don't, because I don't think you'd make the journey and recover to clamber up the commentary ladder. I don't know what you're on about. I'm like Spider-Man. <laughs> Does whatever a spider can. Well, at the moment, can be fire pull themselves out of this hole in the sand. Pass it to Pagano underneath. Pagano again demonstrating big. This time that blade across the pitch. Difficult catch that Brunelli makes. It all leading pass to Posse. What does the lefty have in his locker? He was thinking about the inside there. Instead, Pagano rolls his wrist around it. Brunelli on the end zone line. Oh, that is 
so smooth that high release back and Fuentes finally gets her goal, 6-3. Yeah, Susana Fuentes, the Colombian, clearly B5 have been able to exploit how good she is throughout this match. But look at Andrea Caratella, that snag once again just narrowly missed this big deep shot but the way she moves across this surface we were talking yesterday benji when we saw some of the less experienced on beach teams moving around this sand pit in front of us or sand pitch i should probably call it about how difficult it is to move across the sand how difficult it is to explode out launch yourself get that verticality going but caratero it's like she was born of this surface she just doesn't seem to have any issues in the height with which she ascended to to get that defensive grab. And a grab, not just a block. We've seen so many come and crop her. Wonderful stuff. So B Fire now going to try and start the brake train rolling. Guayota looking to hold here and take half. That one. Choosing just to be a little bit more cautious. Ramos lets the ball hit the floor. Maybe a little bit of a stutter in the cut there. It's a player wide open on the far side if they can turn and isolate it. Eventually, Dorta finds Gabaldoni. Yes. Now trying to run a quick little one-two. Patricio Gonzalez into the backfield, clears through. Really enjoying the switching downfield. Works smarter, not harder. Especially on beach. Utilize those switches. Keep that communication high. What a snap that is from Gonzalez, because Gabaldoni gave her an awful lot of work to do. But now Gabaldoni wants it all. He's going to the end zone for the score. Guayota take half in a rambunctious fashion, 7-3. Well, extremely well deserved. If you can fire your offense like that, then my Jove. You need to do so. It's putting up a massive defensive effort in the last point, taking half in style. There is, of course, no timed half. If you've been watching this coverage, you'll know this very well by now. In terms of no time at half, there's no pause. It's just a case of flip sides if you need to. Yeah, whatever the situation was at the start of the game, just flip reverse that. And that means Guayota are going to be receiving to begin the second half in the left-hand end zone as you're looking at it, which as if b needed their misery compounded anymore. I have to make a confession, Benji. Yes. I'm doing very basic stats for this game, just in terms of so we can see the shape of it on our screens. And I was, my, my finger was hovering. I just pressed the half-time button to signal that that was happening. And I was hovering over the score button for Guayota. It was hovering up here like this. It's almost like the speed intensity, because we know that Huayota, like that's their, their vibe. It's high intensity, high octane ultimate. Just relentlessly punching the opponents in the face with excellent play, excellent defense, until they're sort of startled and dazzled and don't really know what's happened to them. And at the moment, that first half, it really is dazzling. Four breaks the better. I thought, Guayota began the first half on defense, but then they did. began on offense. No, they did. They definitely did start on defense. So something strange has occurred. They've changed half, so they haven't changed the possessions. But at the moment, the Italians are going to have to do something to bring that back and make that error pay. Pagano finds Brunelli. Nice little lead pass here. Susanna Fuentes. Fuentes. It's the live wire Pagano in the backfield in the backfield with those tattooed arms. Back to Brunelli. Brunelli. Ooh, a little bit fluttery. Not a problem for Pagano. Got the three female matching players in the end zone. Ooh! That is a rarity. Just maybe came in a little bit too hard to handle there for Diaz and Brunelli in the backfield. Feels like that should have been the reset. I feel like the option itself was good. It's just the execution wasn't quite there. Oscar Gonzalez comes underneath. Caratero wants to gun that one deep, but uh, even she is human, it turns out. So I've rolled back the VT, Benji. It is possible that Guayota did start on offense. So our stream was a touch delayed. 
It does look more like at the beginning of the game we had a defensive effort from Torino to start. But never mind. Either way, Toyota leading the charge. That one is fired late across the field. Oh, it's macked on! And had Stefanelli not, a, not a lost had not lost her footing, that, that would have been. been outrageous. Absolutely. What a hero she would have made of herself. I mean, you cannot really tip it any more perfectly than that. Just Stefanelli couldn't quite keep her footing in the change of direction. Perhaps they need some Mac line practice after the game to grab themselves that bronze. Febles, as a player tries to come in to get the block there. I think that's Diaz, he's going to have to make way. Luna to our left, proudly pointing out that she's Colombian. Take a look at it again on the replay. I think Diaz sees the opportunity to get the poach in there, but takes a bit of a clattering as she does so. Well, I do like the concern shown by Gonzalez to just make sure that the player is OK that he collided with. But that's part of playing mixed ultimate. There are going to be all sorts of shapes and sizes of bodies around the field. It's to be fair, though, that's exactly the same no matter what which of the divisions you play in? Uh, I think B5 need to work out. They need to get someone. They've, they've, they've clocked it now. Cipriani comes on. Yeah, Federica Cipriani. He's represented so many national team players on this B5 side. She's uh, represented at the under 20 and under 24 divisions. And of course, also playing for the women's team. It's part of the Communication and Marketing Committee for the FIFD, which is the Italian Flying Disc Federation. So checked in. Trying to squeeze that one through. Oh, it is tipped. If you don't catch your D's, Caratero can nearly make you pay. But B5 get away with it. Here's Pagano. He's only got one thing in mind. It's the big play, but that time too big. Stefanelli, again, given too much to do. Well, Simona Stefanelli, the intended target, the environmental consultant, played for TCD, Trinity College Dublin, so I'm sure we have some it Italian-Irish love on the stream. And we can perhaps bring you some updates of the mixed division at large, because, of course, there is another scintillating semi-final going on between Yogo Benito and Shunk. That one at the moment, live play, Yogo Benito two up, 7-5, just taking the half. So Guayota looking for another break. That one thrown straight to Pagano. And though the oh, lovely laid on inside flick there for Cipriani to score. And that'll make it 4-7. It was a hold, but it was a real grind of a hold. Well, at long last, B fire a given possession with a short field to go. Isolation one on one in the end zone. This is, as a defender, the situation you never want to find yourself in with a talented athlete like Federica Cipriani. But of course, for Andrea Pagano, it is Dream City population. Him with such a wonderful target available in front of him. All he has to do is sit low in his pivot and throw to that break side. It's been a real favourite today is that low inside break. Of course, teams favouring the flick side of things. So I, if you're or forehand, as you might know, it, if you're not used to the Frisbee jargon, Indoors, you see a lot of teams favouring a backhand force because it's a slower throw, which be interesting to see if that gets flipped up at any sort of point because there seems to be a lot of those inside low breaks for scores when being forced forehand. Massimo Valliviello with the pull that is caught reasonably deep in the end zone by Guayota. Here's Gabaldoni. 
looking slightly grizzled with the beard. And the slightly, you can tell, well-worn jersey, I think. Well, it's all that UV exposure, you see. It really takes it out on the print. Gonzalez. Blading that one around to Gabaldone. In the underneath. Spectacular bid that doesn't get there. Now out of position, they can capitalize with a bit of break side flow. That was unstoppable for Guayota, 8-4. A fresh and clean hold as they continue to sit pretty on that four point lead. And at the moment, Coyota still finding it fantastic flow and form. Although the Italians have cleaned it up, Benji. Is it too little, too late? They're going to have to find something pretty unique, perhaps some zone to try and stop the rapid flow and movement of Coyota because the Italians are throwing themselves all over the sand, collecting half of the pitch in their jerseys. But it's just coming up a little short. And as you recognize on that last point, putting themselves out of position for the next section of offense. It's interesting because you might think it this, uh, for a Guayota side that's as good as this, it, you know, a lead like this should be safe. But I think back to European Masters, the mixed semi-final between, uh, between B-Fire and Reading and B-Fire seemed down for the count at one stage. I need to come back and take the win. So I'm certainly not counting them out. That is a sumptuous, shapely throw from Andrea Pagano. He hits Andrea Crosetto in stride. His namesake scores for 8-5. Well, as I say, they've cleaned it up. They're now finally found the flow. They've oiled the joints of their machine and the cogs are a whirring. A clean hold on offense responded to with exactly the same from this Turin side. But, as I say, is it too little too late? I'm not putting him out of the count asking the question, Benji. Because at the moment, Coyota are really doing a great job on offense. If this one just trades out, it will be the Italians who will look back on gritted teeth as to how, not lazy, but just how they didn't conserve the disc in those points in the early stages of this match. There were just errors all over the shop, which they've cleaned up now. This is much better representation of what BFAR are capable of and certainly what we saw earlier on in the championship. Yeah, and it's not just going to be gritted teeth because it's got lots of sand in it. Oh, no one wants to think about sandy mouth. That's not the one. But BFAR, this is going to be their closest game apart from their quarter final against their fellow Italians, Padova Gold. Well, also thinking about the uh, pool game we streamed yesterday when they beat Chak in Universe. Oh, actually, that's a good point. And of course, Chak on the other side of the bracket playing against Yogo Benito. Score update on that when we get it. High release backhand towards this near side. Bid comes flying through, but Gonzalez retains focus to make the catch. Monterde comes underneath, finds Caratero. Caratero, oh my goodness, that is filthy. The cheek of I that know. release, oh my goodness, that is just scenes for Coyota. Who was responsible for that dirty, dirty inside, Blake? That is Andrea Caratero. Think about her, she's been dominant at the receiving end, but she's got throws as well. Benji, I think I might be in love. Look at that. Just utilizing the throw and go to get past the mark there, get a little bit of inside out shape to the front corner of the end zone. I mean, it is a pass of real beauty. You could hang that one in a museum. Look at that, past the bidding defender, securing it at the front of the end zone. And mid pivot establishment, the core strength that Caratero must have. Yep, definitely, definitely developing a big old frisbee crush. And I'm sure you are too at home. We see you. We know you're here watching this fantastic game. Coyota still very dominant off the virtue of the beginning of that first half, but we are trading this one out now. Posse sends us to La Placa. 
Sneaking that one around the mark into Diaz. Diaz sees a target deep. The two Colombians looking to combine. Fuentes with the layout. Oh, the disc just tailed off at the end, but a foul on the throw. Quite a little while ago as well. A connection. It's not, it's not the throw from, uh, from Diaz. It's the throw to Diaz from La Plaza. Yeah, and after the overthrow, it's Stefanelli that's having a chat. And you've obviously got to call the fouls as they happen, Gonzalez. Oh, it's even before that. Oh, yeah. So perhaps she's going to wish to have had that one back, depending on the outcome of this one, as the Italians continue to chase the Spaniards. Posse slashing horizontally underneath. Breaking around, good communication left for Fuentes. Fuentes centering to Diaz. Diaz looking at the end zone, trying to find options. Instead, it's the little dish. Filippo La Placa leads that one into space for Posse. And Posse resets. Really enjoying the dynamic marks on the force. So jumping around to try and attack the threats. Again, that inside channel proving fruitful as they find Diaz and Diaz finds Stefanelli for the score. Well, perhaps a bit of a lucky stoppage there for B-Fire after they overthrew the legs of Fuentes. But they punch another one in. We're just trading out this second half now. Yeah, the game's nicely poised. 6-9 is the score. Guayota very much in the box seat at the moment. Here's the throw that really unlocks it. Just a little bit of loft on that backhand through the channel. And then again, breakside flow is so difficult to stop on the beach. And Stefanelli takes advantage with the score. Well, we've seen a decent amount of creativity in terms of the forcing out here on this pitch in earlier games. Be nice to see just a bit of a change of rhythm, maybe some points where teams are choosing to force backhand instead of forehand, maybe some force middle, maybe some force out, which has actually been very effective, especially against the wind of pinning teams to the sideline and taking advantage of the relatively light conditions here, but still breezy. This looks like the deep shot has to go. Indeed it does, Gonzalez Navasa chases and couldn't quite get there in time well we just mentioned the breeze and it is indeed from right to left on your screen so clearly just a little tiny push push of the disc just out of the reach of Gonzalez yeah it is blowing to that back left corner or front left corner depending on which way you're looking at it I guess indeed but to this side of the pitch and from right to left well Patricia Gonzalez very experienced, been playing for over a decade, 11 years strong career. She's a psychologist by trade and obviously plays for Huayota and Yaka in the women's division in Cincinnati. Valentini, oh, with a push pass over the mark to Valley Viello. The gumption to do that on your own end zone line. I'm here for it. I'm so here for it. Pogano in the backfield. Rifles it deep, Valley Viello has got to get on the horse and gets it past the bidding defender. A break for B-Fire. Their first of the game. Well, that was an absolutely sensational rundown under hot pressure. And it, in contrast to the previous long attempt, as we see some warming up behind the stands, the previous scoring attempt for Coyota, the disc being pushed down and further than the thrower had intended. This one, if anything, off the paws of Andrea Pagano is helped by that wind, helping it sit up and just perfectly reach the bread bargain basket even of the intended target so till still two points the better are Coyota but that is a lovely 
piece of offense on the run for B-Fire and they take their first break in the second half. B-Fire are not going to go down without the metaphorical fight. But Jogo Benito on the other pitch for the other side of this bracket are extending their lead there now 11 to 7. So two points away of securing their spot. Here's the deep look from Guayo to Caratero. Bids but can't get there. Also, I don't want to don't want to necessarily call attention to it now that it's gone. But uh, Andrea Pagano was miles offside on that ball. Oh no, you've got to call it out, Benji. You always got to call it out. The people, they need to know. An Italian support on the far sideline, trying to G up their compatriots. Hammer fake over the top. Pagano bangs the disc as he catches it. Get any loose sand out of there. Pagano, I think he wants it all. And all the blade over the top to hit Valentini. What a grab that is. Be fire, man. They can just turn it on at times. And you wonder how they get themselves into those sticky situations. Valentini underneath. Well, you just fire it at Valentini. He's all the B and B fire. That one always dangerous. Defender had the opportunity to bid, but Gonzalez couldn't beat Pagano to it. Pagano now blading to the back of the end zone for Valentini. Another B-fire break. They are down just one at 8-9. Well, the female matching players have been so reliable for Coyota during this match, but as the perhaps a little bit of tiredness sneaks into the brains of the throwers for the Tenerife side, it seems to be that they're just poorly executing. And I'll tell you who has definitely had some sideline sugar is Luca Valentini. And it looks like Guayota rocked a little bit, having to take a timeout. So we will take a short stoppage as well. And we'll see you for the second half of the second half of this mixed semi final. We are Hive Ultimate, a group of players and coaches from all over the world working together to progress the next generation of Ultimate Strategy. We've helped top teams win world championships and new teams introduce the sport in a fun and inclusive way. Search for Hive Ultimate on YouTube to learn more about our cutting edge strategies and to see analysis of world class teams. To find out what Hive can do for your team, head over to our Patreon page where you can gain access to our exclusive drills and session plans and to join our worldwide community of coaches. Get ahead of the curve with Hive Ultimate. Right now, he's gonna have to bid. Oh, just a, oh, just a football. <laughs> Huge layout block. Unbelievable stuff on the front corner of the end zone. Maybe well. just that boost of energy they needed. I was called electric, become a member. B Fire 8, Guayota 9 is the score in this mixed semi final from the European Beach Ultimate Club Championships here on the Praia de Rocha, Portimao, Portugal. And the Iberian Inferno it shows no signs of stopping here. Down one, but three points on the bounce. It was 9-5 and now it's just 9-8. Guayota would love to get a hold here just to transfer a bit of the pressure back onto B-Fire. Benji Reese and Hannah Pendlebury in the booth as that pull lands out of bounds and will come in from the brick mark. Well, as the noise starts to rise in the stands on the far side, this mixed semi-final is really, really starting to cook now. But Coyota just need to be a bit more chilly. The gender to five, we've got three female matching players upfield, but hopefully they can just steady themselves and stop trying to just hit it in three passes. Yeah, Pagano was poaching, so they utilised that at the start to get the reset off. A little bit of separation created, but maybe through contact. It's 
not the first push-off foul we've seen called on this pitch today. No, certainly is not. Uh, Monterde is the player who is making that reset cut from, that Pagano seemed to take a little bit of umbrage with. We have lots of support for Coyote in the chat. Disc is going to go back to Navas to uh, Gonzalez. That I should clarify is Patricia Gonzalez. Oh, did you see the <laughs> speed with which? He moved out back out of the sand after this little sort of knee slide. Swinging in the backfield, Monterde. That one wanted to sneak that one through. Really good alertness there from Stefanelli. Pagano picks up quickly, wants to strike while the iron is hot. You bet he wants it big. He might have it as well, but that one is well covered and knocked down. And Pagano looks to this guy in frustration. Good well, defense there from Marta Ortiz. Yeah, getting far too hasty, just trying to do a little bit of what Gaiota have been having the issues with these past couple points, just throwing shots that weren't really available. Ortiz is poached deep, but the first swing across. Very stacked so far away right now. Give them a lot of space for potential unders, but does maybe compress the chance of a deep game. Patricio Gonzalez thinks about the break to her sister Cristina. Instead, on the run, uh, and Pagano may have picked up a dead leg there as Monterde tried to clear downfield. Well, it certainly looked like it caught him and a bit of a funny bone with the uh, rolling around on the floor. Just checking his knee. Something you definitely don't want to uh, blow out and understand the unpredictability of the surface. But it's going to be called back again. You can see the frustration in the body language of Monterde. Just got to keep composure here. Absolutely. But it seems that Pagano is fine, having just checked his knee. One to keep an eye on. And you see Valentini pulling some double duty, appearing on the D-line. I think he's more on the O-line for B-fire, if I recall. Huge bid flies through from Valentini, doesn't get there. Dished off downfield by Gabadoni and tried to fire it across the pitch. Player maybe a little bit shaken up. Fuentes was trying to apply the pressure defensively. Yeah, and an accepted foul immediately. You could see the intentions of Fuentes, but too much body contact and strips the disc out of possession. Marta Ortiz sees the just checked in by Fuentes. Has to take on the break there and stretching and diving it. Getting there is Monterde. Well, you can tell the Italians have turned the screws and putting on so much pressure now. So often, Guayota players having to take to the sand. That one, however, in stride, beautifully weighted pass from Gabaldoni. Finds Mator Ortiz and Guayota able to get back on the board after that three point B fire run. They're up two at 10 8. And I believe the cap probably is gone during that point. So I will double check that it is game to 11. <laughs> Hannah's just had it confirmed from our lovely scorekeepers down on the southern that it is indeed a game to 11. There's the bid from Valentini that didn't get there. Strong, quick hands. Then this blade towards the far side, rolling and diving. Monterde gets there. So it's going to have to be three unanswered from B Fire. They've done it before in very recent memory, Benji. 
But right now, if they can just stay calm and composed, I do favour the Tenerife side. Carolina Gonzalez comes on to play a bit of defence. Seeing B fires O line for out there for the first time in a while. Posse catches the ball and finds Brunelli. Brunelli underneath. Lovely little leading pass that one. Stefanelli into the centre, right into the poach. Great alertness from Sergio Diaz. Oscar Gonzalez. That one low. Posse bids doesn't get there. Leading Caratero into the end zone. Guayota, we will see you in the gold medal game tomorrow. Oh, what a way to finish it. The Italians having struggled so hard in the beginning of this game and then finding some fantastic fire and buzzing all around this pitch. It just was one of those little moments where if you could have it back and do it different, but well contained and fantastically executed dynamic offense flowing across the pitch for the Tenerife side and a fantastic performance to see them into that gold medal match as you say Benji tomorrow for B-Fire you could see what they were capable of at times but the inconsistency especially in that first half we said they might have done and they did leave it too little too late and Guayota are going to be a real strong contender for that gold medal tomorrow where they will face the Jogo Benito of Berlin after they saw off Czech 13 at 9. And that is a final that I already cannot wait for. We have one more game for you today here at EBUCC going over to the Open Division again, a quarterfinal. Two teams we haven't streamed yet. Solaris of Poland up against Krakens from Barcelona in Spain. For all of us here, at Ulti TV and for Hannah Pendlebury, Benjamin Reese saying thank you very much for watching. Guayota versus Jogo Benito in the mixed finals tomorrow. And Ulti TV will see you on the other side. Bula, Ulti TV, E, B U C C, Lyrical. Thank you.